Well, welcome to the next installment, the next episode of the RV Small Talk podcast. And in this situation, we are now at the same rally hall having a different rally. <laughs> are we confusing yet? I know. It's we're in the exact same spot, like at the exact same table, mm-hmm. but we have a different crowd. Last week we had the tiny trailers. Now we have the truck campers. And they are a different crowd. So stick with us and we'll get some input, some questions, some stories, some insight from the truck camping community at the Texas Truck Camper Rally. Or as I like to call them, truck camper rurururs. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> We'd also like to thank our sponsor for this episode, Lance. That's right. They are one of the most well-known truck campers, and they're known for quality. That's really Mm -hmm. what Lance is known for. They have built a quality truck camper for decades, maybe 50 years. Oh, my gosh. Right. Uh, So many Lance truck campers have... Uh, taken on adventures. Right. And they've been somewhat of the standard bearers for a long time. They introduced new methods of building these things, different new products, new different components. Um, So if you're looking at something for quality, for longevity, and a proven track record, Lance Campers is the perfect place to start. That's right. Lance Camper. Dot com. Again, we'd like to welcome you to the RV Small Talk podcast, where we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and the people, places, and adventures that go along with them. We are your hosts from Princess Craft RV. I'm Clint. I'm Lindsay. And I'm PJ. And thank you so much for joining us here at the Truck Camper Rally. We'd like to direct your attention to where you can find show notes for this episode and all other previous episodes. That is RVSmallTalk.com. You can also join our community at RV Small Talk Community on Facebook. Check us out there because we share little conversations, ideas, our our listeners share questions or photos, tips, tricks, recipes. We don't care. Share it. Join the conversation <laughs> yeah. at the RV Small Talk community on Facebook. And that's where you find out about the next rally. Right. You could be here. Sitting on a microphone with us. That's right. Wow. All right. Well, let's jump in. So this rally is totally different than our rally last week. Yeah, it's sunny. That's well, the, <laughs> that's baseline. That's the thing. Yeah, baseline. Yeah. We had almost endless it's not rain. Not pouring down rain. The the temperatures getting up into the high eighties. Yeah, somebody not, was complaining at coffee this morning that it was going to be eighty seven degrees. No, nope, I don't even. And care. I was like, I don't care. It's I'll take it. Awesome. Sun yep. on the skin, but also the mosquitoes apparently are waking up. Yeah, the rain, I guess, made the mosquitoes happen. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had mosquitoes. but It's Texas in May. What did you expect? Plus, after all the rain, Uh all the puddles? No, Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Listen, I want perfect weather. No mosquitoes. (laughs) Okay. Where is that? Is that Mm. that like a SoCal thing? California California, on the beach. Yeah, that's where that happens? No, that's in the wind. It's still cold. Is it still cold in Southern Cal? I think it is. What? I remember wearing. Oh, that's the water. I remember wearing like sweatshirts on the beach in the summer in California. Yeah, well, that's okay. It's just a sweatshirt. Weird. Y'all are just weird. I yeah. know. Okay, so here's here's the deal about the truck camper rally. We learned that there are very different type campers in the truck camper crowd. The tiny trailer rally crowd. They are so I don't know, uh, hippie esque. Maybe what? are they? Yeah, they're they're free spirits. Maybe is that a better word? Maybe, they're yeah. individuals. They are all eclectic. It is a more eclectic crowd. Yeah, but they are also That's a good general word. less likely to be on top of the schedule or on time or to hold <laughs> us to our schedule. Whereas the truck camper crowd, <laughs> or to is, even know that there's a schedule. Right. The truck camper <laughs> rally crowd, they are more likely to hold us to our schedule um, and ask like detailed questions. Yeah, the truck rally crowd like holds us accountable for everything mm-hmm. that we've planned for mm-hmm. we better show up and it, do it it's a healthy relationship we re- we assure you well you know it's kind of interesting with the rally now that we had to kind of change it up yeah. because you know it's still kind of pandemic right time so we don't get to have our chili cook off and we don't have our live band on saturday night mm-hmm. because we do crazy dancing crazy fun it's kind of weird to have those community events taken out right so uh yeah we're replacing it with just sitting around the fire pit and chatting yeah just togetherness time not so much 
the act the level of activity that we're used to because the chili cook-off is a known thing at this rally where yes. it's it's an event it's a competition people really get into it they prepare for a long time yeah, we have we have seen people very serious about our chili cook-off right. and you know what it's true they are so excited to win that two dollar walmart spoon with Truck camper rally in the day, <laughs> chili cook off right. burned into it by amateurs. I assure you, this is nothing to write home about. And they're so excited to win the prize. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to really miss that. And and the dance, you said crazy dancing. Let me clarify. It's not that the dancing itself is crazy. It's just that, that there's so much involvement. We bring in a band. They always have some sort of live country country swing kind of feel to it mm -hmm. and it's a very active dance floor is and why, why why is it so active because there's prizes involved <laughs> because we have prizes we run for around, dancing yeah. and i'm gonna miss the dancing it's fun um and the well, kids there's always kids at, the, at this rally and we can get the kids dancing too yeah i think it's weird that there's always more kids at the truck camper rally than there is at the tiny trailer rally yeah, because most people think that truck campers are like for grandpas and then, you know, there's no kids or families. Mm -hmm. But we always have kids at this rally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very interesting. You know, the world is not as it seems some days. Absolutely. But hopefully next year we can do all the crazies instead of all just a things. few of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but this year we're still toning it back and i'm just really thrilled that we feel comfortable enough to sit around the campfires together mm -hmm. because we canceled last year we rescheduled last year yeah. we moved it from springtime when we it definitely usually had a rally is last year to the fall oh yeah well we had a fall camp kind out. of well, it's called a camp yeah. out. social distancing camp out. get together right. camp out right you're right Okay. But not the same. I'm ready for it to get back to normal. Who's with me? Here, here. Now, right. how about we see if we can get someone to join us on the mic and they can give us a story or a question. or Let's hear about truck like camper life. Well, start by introducing yourself and tell us what kind of truck camper you have. Dennis Waterbeck, Fort Worth, Texas. 23-year-old. 23-year-old Lance. You have a 23-year-old really? Lance camper. This yeah. month. Yeah. Wow. Happy birthday. And, and, and <laughs> Happy birthday. And who was your bride? Mary Jean. <laughs> Mary Jean. Okay. Almost almost 50 years. Nice. Oh. Wow. Uh, okay. Wow. So you kind of prove our point earlier with our sponsor that Lance makes a camper that can go the distance. Sure. You, you have, you said how many years again with this one? It's so a 1998. It's so a 1998. Wow. And you have been how far with it? Just, I mean, just give me some places. Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Utah. Mm -hmm. Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Montana. It's been through one tornado. Been th tornado was in the campground we were in. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Was it in Kansas? It was in Canton, Texas. Ah. Oh. At the flea market. Ah. Wait, so of course. It was your recent. favorite place. It was only oh, a few no, years no, ago? This no. Was years ago. We were, oh. uh, we were inside the camper. It rained like crazy. Oh, that's terrible. We got out and started walking around when it quit raining, and a bunch of the little tents and pop up mm -hmm. things there blowed down. Uh -huh. A big tree, probably two foot across. It was laying on top of a van. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. Cars were flipped on the highway. Cars were flipped. Stuff but that didn't stop the crick camp. The, the kick from <laughs> going forward. The, you flea market people are serious. The creek that runs through there was uh -huh. washing people's stuff away. And you just walk around it and see what's left. We were on There a, might be some good deals, right? We were on mm -hmm. one side of the creek. Our <laughs> camper was on the other side and the water was even going over the bridge. Oh my gosh. So we had to stay on that side till it went down and then you had to it, shop one side first until the water went oh, down then you could shop the other and side. two floods in canton yeah we've been to two floods in canton too well i'd say canton's a pretty dangerous place yeah. Mm -hmm. no, we haven't <laughs> been back for a long time hey, ken's got it out for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you've never been you should go yeah it is a beautiful part true. of texas yeah it's, and it's it, and it's, the flea market's real fun yeah it goes on forever i found my best fleas there <laughs> 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 oh my goodness well sounds like you guys have a lot of fun in your truck camper yep, yep. for a lot of years yes mm -hmm. thank you for being brave and talking to us 
that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we, we listened last time you, you did it. Well, in October. So glad you joined us. So there's a vote for long term, just loving your camper, keeping up with it. You know, upkeep storage goes a long ways. But if you get a solid one. Man, yeah, everybody keeps can, talking about we need something new. You don't need something new. You need to love what you have and right. keep it in good shape. Right. Right. And a refresh is just whatever your imagination can dream up away. That's true, especially with truck campers. Repurpose a storage space. Repurpose a box. Give it, give it a different color scheme. Yeah. What have you. Or in just our put tech a, talk, that is part of what we talked about yeah. is storage. Redoing to fit what you want better. Yeah. Keep a reciprocating saw in the shower. That's what I do. <laughs> No. It's so weird having a, a rally right now because we're not doing everything that we normally do. So it feels very kind of laid back. And this afternoon, the one of the best things is we get to go see everybody's truck camper and see what they've done. Yeah. yeah. That is one of the best parts. It is one of the best parts. And you know what? I love to see how it's decorated. Yeah. Because I know that's kind of silly. I love all the tech stuff. I love all the stuff they've oh, added. Sure. All the cool things that that people do to their truck campers. But one of the things I like the best is, you know, how do you store stuff? What do you decorate? What do you stick on the wall? I think the you know, storage where do is you the big thing for me. Towels and Yeah, I want to know how things are stored because it's the same for tiny trailers or smaller trailers like you have well, this small space where do you put all your stuff and how do you stay organized and we have like a lot of examples but one one family that is here at the truck camper rally that comes to mind is the O'Shaughnessy's because they're a family of four they have two yes. puppies and they have one rabbit and they a rabbit they have a rabbit in their truck camper they also have they usually travel with two hamsters as well and they were telling me the story of they actually moved to Tyler and they had this idea that they would just stay in the truck camper until they found their house. And after about what? six, after about six weeks, nuts. they said, no, they actually made it no. six weeks. The four yeah. of them in a truck camper with and they said, no, can't do this. Yeah. With all of those animals. And, you know, I the one reason that makes the O'Shaughnessy so awesome is how busy they are. Right. There is no end to their activities. I mean, yeah. they're, off, they're actually not here right now because they're off doing a horseback riding morning horseback event. ride event here in Bandera. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And yeah. And the, their children are busy. They're just a busy family. I, and he works from home. So, of course, if they're living in a truck camper, he's working in a truck camper. She's homeschooling the kids all within, what, 10 feet of each other. Right. Also, there's a bunny in there and a bunny and I can't two get dogs. Over that. Yeah, they like created like in their shower in their truck camper is like a little rabbit hutch. So then, what do they do when they take a shower? They don't. Don't tell me they don't take a shower. They don't take a shower in their truck camper. They, they camp at the camp at locations that yeah. have shower facilities. They use the facilities. Okay. Which, so their shower becomes which a I've learned hutch. that it doesn't really matter so okay. much that unless you're in a big like class A or fifth wheel, a lot of people will actually go that route. I've never showered in my shower. Showers but, become but that's this. that's mainly because I can't figure out how to get the hot water to work. <laughs> <laughs> we should maybe fix that. Can somebody help me with that? <laughs> we, we, that's embarrassing, Lindsay. I, I mean, I just haven't gotten around to it. I'm like, you have to like turn <laughs> knobs this way and that, and <laughs> and punch a button to turn on the hot water. Heat. No, I did that, but it never worked. So I just said, screw it. I'll just use the showers here, okay. which is always just an easy go to solution. Yeah. And if you grew up. Camping yeah. in state parks or, or, no, or it's that weird. Corps of Engineer it's parks not. that have restrooms and all that, then it's always, then it's you know, yeah. like tent camping, car camping, if you will. But car camping always had those facilities. But it's not that weird to not use your shower because you don't want to use your shower for one reason or another. It, it is weird to not use your shower because you just decided it was too much trouble to figure out how it worked. I just haven't gotten around to it. I've been busy okay. hosting rallies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's just a timing thing. I don't know. It's, yeah. <laughs> You're sticking up for it just for the heck of it. I, uh, I don't use my shower in my trailer because I don't have one. Yes, you do not That's have a one. really good reason. That's a great but reason. But it has a really good sink. Yeah, I was about to say, just sit yeah. in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone, actually, I had Drew show me before I left for this trip how to fix the hot water thing. 
He was like, do you see how these handles are? Okay, well, turn that one that way. And I was like, all right. And then I got here and I was like, yeah, I don't remember what he said. So. <laughs> well, that happens to everybody. Oh, well. well but most- showers are, are a great place to use for all kinds of things. Yeah, like rabbits. You I, put your yeah, rabbit in the shower. I mean, I am telling you, if you need... Showers are a great place to use for all kinds of things. You can wash your I toes. Mean, you can wash your it. nose. No, think about it. How many small trailers especially... The showers are used for something else, Multi-purpose. whether it's a closet, storage, yeah, mm-hmm. or whether it's a, a hanging space. No, I don't use it for or, that either. Uh, I have seen people put electronics in there because sure. they wanted some special something. Yeah, or I mean, showers are that space that you can kind of convert. It's like this big. It can be like the closet, the, the junk with drawer water in it. of your yes. camper. Yes. They're the drunk closet. And Every people house put all has their old a, shoes in right. there. I've seen when they come in for repairs, people have like all their shoes piled in the shower. It's just I've seen showers used for lots of things. Yeah. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. And a lot of people, they'll if they camp at places with facilities, it makes sense for them to do that because they don't want to mess with tanks and mm-hmm. things like that. We know right. several people, even higher profile like youtube and social media level travelers who do it full-time they they just use their shower that way like you said storage right. of some kind storage mm-hmm. i think it's interesting um now that i have a trailer everybody has always talked about storage in the bathroom and how they think they need all this storage in the bathroom uh-huh i can't fill up all the storage in my bathroom yeah, yeah, but you, you can't have fill like... up the storage anywhere in your house the only place that you ever run out of space is your desk at work it's yeah. true that's well, that's first true. of all you you're, out of space. you're a minimalist and you just don't have anything second of all you have a crazy <laughs> amount of storage in that Terra. that's true and, and i guess i'm just like like the cabinets but, are everywhere but what do you put in there i, I mean, don't know you've got i haven't ever filled up my cabinets in my trailer and I, I travel just, with two kids you know and what? I don't have enough Let's stuff. find us a few hoarders to inspire you. I think maybe we yeah, need to maybe go maybe hit Dennis up the Canton. Just talk to. Um, nah. Maybe go to the flea market. Yeah, the yeah. Canton find other trade stuff. days and get some more stuff for our campers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could do that. I could, I could say, you know, I love a good flea market. Yeah. I well, and that's just it. You haven't taken your trailer out enough times to start going, you know what? I'm also going to bring a sewing hobby or something like that. Would you travel she with a sewing would. hobby? Because you, you, I don't know, do you sew for fun or do you just sew out of utility? Uh, I sew for, because I want to have something that, that I can't require sewing. <laughs> okay, so it's more so, utility than... Yeah, it is not relaxing or uh, just, I love making things. It no, is, you could bring, I like, want this. You mm-hmm. could bring like paints or drawings. Yeah, you sometimes paint. Yeah. Or like a keyboard. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but is that going to fill up my bathroom storage? A keyboard might. Uh, <laughs> if you take it apart. <laughs> <laughs> a box full of keyboard. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I just, I find that to be interesting, that that storage is such a key thing. And when people talk about storage in the bathroom, you know, we just need a couple of towels and okay, a little so zipper bag full of stuff. I get that, but what really takes up storage in my family's case no matter what kind of travel i'm doing is kids and kid stuff like what yeah so obviously games and entertainment stuff activity things because they aren't like like me i just want to relax they Mm -hmm. want they have so much energy they want Mm -hmm. things to do so oftentimes it's their bikes which means bike helmets right it's scooters um it's it's all their little accoutrements it's snacks it's um for, i have a, one who's still in diapers it's mm-hmm. it's things that go along with that that um I'm so sorry uh, it'll, it'll fix itself just give it <laughs> it'll time. fix itself <laughs> yeah, just and the it day time. it does it'll, it's yes. glorious so i think that that's been an eye-opener is the way we pack it it blows my mind how much stuff comes with me because i also traveled light before but kids multiplies that Mm -hmm. yeah i think you're right you know another thing that i noticed that people really talk about with storage is that they want to have like take their barbecue grill and all these cooking things right and that becomes that kind of feeds into yes you got to cook and or you got to have meals and all that but that's a whole nother mindset that's part of the adventure for for a lot of people yeah the barbecue and the grill and the if they have that and the cooking utensils and things for the campfire and you know all that kind of stuff it's just 
it's it's interesting that that becomes the main thing with people looking for storage. Yeah. So so if I were better in that realm of cooking and all that, I can see bringing it as part of the experience, part of the uh, the hobby I bring. But mm -hmm. and it may I would think I would love to get into that, but I couldn't possibly get into it in this phase. You need to wait for your kids to get bigger and then you can be right. the barbecue king. Because my <laughs> and I don't think I'd ever, ever, ever make it to any level of barbecue king, but it could be fun to try. It could be like the barbecue learn. prince. Squire. <laughs> Jester. Just there we go. There. there. That's you. Jester. Um, and, and one reason is my my son is he's he's a little bit accident prone. He wouldn't notice that. He thinks he's just barreling through life. He's like a tiny Tasmanian but devil. He would probably start a fire. But, you know, when he's a little bit older, that's mm -hmm. controllable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I'm just not it's there like yet. like training a puppy. He's just not trained he's yet. He's a big puppy. Yeah, I think I'm really excited to have hobbies like when I travel or like bring my embroidery stuff or whatever. What would your hobbies be? Would it be embroidery? I would totally bring embroidery stuff. Would it be? And I would just sit outside. I mean, who can ukulele? see Lindsay embroidering? I just. I, I do it so, all the time. I know. It's so surprising. It seems so so quiet and sedentary and that's just doesn't uh, yeah. seem to be you. okay that's true i can't do it for like a long <laughs> amounts of time that's she, right one project i got my forever. 10 cross stitches in. <laughs> yeah, i'm done <laughs> but i can do it while i'm doing other things which i think is why it's fun what? so like i can do it while i'm watching the kids play outside or i can oh, do it okay. while i'm listening to music or mm -hmm. i can do it while i'm watching a show or i can like it's just something for my hands to do while I'm doing something else. I don't just sit and do that and just that. I just eat donuts. It keeps my hands busy. I I can eat donuts <laughs> and embroider at the same time. You can. Watch me. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. That's what the kid is for. I mean. <laughs> bite, bite, uh, feed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You have given me ideas yeah. <laughs> so yeah. many ideas okay so maybe embroidery maybe bring your ukulele i'd love to travel with a, a beater guitar a little bit um mm -hmm. and i would totally love to do more fishing i wasn't raised fishing but i've always wanted to just have more experience with that talk about boring I can embroider while fishing. You just, <laughs> you just stand there and then like. What's with the wet donuts? <laughs> fishing is cool, but then like if I ever actually caught a fish, I would have no idea what to do. I would completely freak out. Well, that's why you fish with somebody else yeah. who is a fisherman. And then be yeah. like. Ah, you have to swing it at them. Take this. <laughs> okay. Now what do I do? Just whack him in the face with a fish. So. Well, I wouldn't know how to start fishing. I mean, I would need somebody with a little more knowledge. The basics are the basics are easy. You put a string easy. in the water. Yeah, but with what? And then you do the really thing. A, a worm or a little plastic thing. A piece of bread. Okay. Or so yeah, a hot have, dog. A I, hot I dog. have no idea. I started down this path a few months ago because I wanted to do this with my kids, and I have uh -huh. no background in fishing. I don't have many out avenues to find a fishing resource. It's a, uh -huh. You know, a coach. A, you know, a life lesson director i don't have that <laughs> you so, don't have a life coach so i literally bought a beginning fisher fishing book and it talks about takes you through the basics tackle and all that maybe we'll uh maybe in the show notes of our next episode i can like link this is the book that i got and it's actually really good it tells you really yeah it tells you i mean i can't imagine buying a book on fishing it's like it's 2021 you should, clint you, you, yeah, well, you i totally should, youtube should it too. To it. <laughs> you should know how to I, how hard could it? I don't know. It's but, not hard. But I wouldn't know where to start. It's not hard. And and all I wanted to know is like how to be a little bit more successful than just throwing a hook in a bobber with a worm. I wanted to right. know because they talk about look at your setting and understand how fish operate. Mm -hmm. Look for structure. And in this temperature, they're probably deeper. In this temperature, they're probably closer to the edge. You know, so there's some psychology, psychology, fish psychology. Can you have fish no. psychology? No, but you can have fisherman psychology. Like little tiny yeah. fish laying on little tiny couches talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like, what bothers them? <laughs> their their, their daddy fish. issues. <laughs> fish, where did it all start? Well, I never knew my dad. Oh, <laughs> poor fish. I remember when I first erupted out of my egg. <laughs> There's their sad lips. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pout pout fish oh okay all right snap out of it S snapper <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh no! Oh yes. Right. So 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 those are the hobbies: fish, fishing, maybe maybe a little music, maybe some cooking. What what else would y'all maybe get into? Hiking. Hiking. Um. Well, with my kids, probably collecting rocks. Okay. Maybe maybe if you oh, could turn that into like holy farm geocaching. Uh yeah. No. no, not your thing. I spend enough time with electronics and. No, geocaching doesn't need electronics. Yeah, but you have to figure out where it is. Well, yeah, but then like... But waypoints and geocaching can be done old school with a map and a compass, which could be a cool skill. That sounds hard. Can I embroider while I'm doing it? (laughs) You 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 can follow along embroidering with someone who's geocaching yes just you just put a gopro them. on their head pretty sure like embroidering and walking is not a good idea which is also why i love it i get to sit or sit. or no get a wheelbarrow no. and they can geocache while wheelbarrowing <laughs> you around while you're embro- embroidering all right so <laughs> no <laughs> well none of these things we've talked about have like inspired me to gain that hobby so all right fine i guess i need to think of some more i think all you need to do i don't is- know maybe a ukulele i could do that yeah but if you just travel with coffee you'd probably be good i'd be fine yeah give me a <laughs> just making coffee it's all i need so yeah that's that's good enough for me i guess i'm hobbyless at this point we're at skyline ranch rv park in bandera texas the cowboy capital of the world of the world of the world i just went to downtown bandera and let me tell you what there's a lot of cowboy stores yeah <laughs> everything if is you like need a saddle we got cowboy them. hats and boots. boots and like everything is leather I don't understand why how they have works. so many stores and they're all exactly the same. Have you ever wondered how well, why it works so well that cowboy towns like this work so well for motorcycle communities? Yeah. And Bandera is like proof of that. They have a cowboy, world cowboy headquarters kind of feel and heritage. And they also are a destination for, for motorcycles. motorcycle rallies. Well, there's so much like pretty motorcycle riding in the hill country out here yeah and so, beer there's beer out here so that's probably beer. that really works uh-huh so we have so far we did tech talk this morning um i missed it was it lively was it great you know it was interesting uh at the end someone said i am so excited this is the first time we didn't talk about batteries isn't that funny yeah i thought that was great because battery is a bad word we usually yeah yeah, talk about all kinds of things technical things and one thing that comes up is batteries and then it it just takes forever to get through batteries there's so much to say and then and there's different there's so many different takes on batteries and so so the battery field is not as cut and dry as specs there's also philosophies of use and that will that will mess up or color at least if not fully mess up a whole battery conversation but what i think didn't happen is uh we didn't get um a lot of super engineer brains this morning with too much coffee oh (laughs) that's an issue that's i think where our batteries go south but sideways. Mm-hmm. sideways in about 30 minutes we're going to be doing the camper tours um so you get to go see everybody's truck camper yeah. and i can't wait i love seeing we're going to take lots do. of pictures and hopefully put them up everywhere but if yeah you, it's really cool to see how i mean th- such a small space and seeing everybody's different campers they're mm-hmm. all so different how they make it work. Can, right. Can I say, mm-hmm. if you want no. to see what these rallies are like and you want to see these campers, these, the people who do this, even if you've never been to a Texas tiny trailer rally or a Texas truck camper rally, go to those respective pages and follow them on Facebook. Do that. You don't have to have a history with either rally. You don't have to have a notion that you will in- attend, though you really should (laughs) of course you should follow them anyways because you'll get a sense of the event follow them anyways because you'll get to know the people you'll see these these units whether it be the tiny trailers or the truck campers and you'll you'll understand what's being spoken about here so that's the invite i invite you to join those communities even if you aren't physically in them or at the rallies yet that yeah that being said we've had people at both the truck camper rally and last week's tiny trailer rally who don't even have campers they don't even own a trailer Uh they 
literally just show up and hang out with us so that they can see the trailers so that they can hang out with the people here Mm -hmm. um we have people come to the tiny trailer rally that have trailers that aren't so tiny but they still get to come and hang out so Mm -hmm. um yeah Yeah, it's just fun it's fun to get to know the people and get to chat and learn yeah just learn truck camper tours and then tomorrow we'll do more tech talk um wait tonight we're showing a movie Yes. We have movie night. That'll be fun. And then tomorrow we'll have more tech talk and, and camper tours. Mm-hmm. And then we get to do our happy hour, which is always fun. Yeah. Because people bring things to drink and because then they're happy. we drink them. Yes. They're happy for a whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> you get one. And then we're going to have some barbecue. Um, we're going to have barbecue. From we usually, a local place here. It's really, really good. And that's when we usually have our dance, but. That'll be next time. Yeah. But we'll play music and I'm yeah. sure Clint and PJ will dance at least once. I don't know. You almost killed me last week. You threw out my back last week. <laughs> you guys. Okay. Oh, never mind. Fun. I'll Maybe dance we will. by myself. There you go. There you go. But I think the the time that I really look forward to is sitting around the fire pits at night. Yep. Chatting with people, just getting to the relaxing. Losing enjoying. all all sense of time because yeah. it's such good hang yeah and all of a sudden we look down and we're like oh it's eleven thirty. we better go to bed uh, yeah. and then i wake up really really tired what yeah that's exactly what happens that's but it's fun if you only see these people once a year you know, yeah that's the thing it. that i love seeing these people like once a year it's like a family reunion every year yeah. it is and you get you have so much to talk about and catch up on because you haven't seen each other in a year um they get to see simone every year which is just yeah, crazy that's, that's to me entertaining. because like the first strut camper rally she was like tiny literally no i was pregnant oh and yeah she was tiny she's <laughs> the tiniest and then they've seen her like every year and she's like so it's kind of cool it is it's really fun you so, should come and when we you say that totally we get come. tired there's different types of exhaustion the tired i get from this thing yes it's physical but it's also feeling like accomplished and worthwhile Totally. It's a different type of, it's not just flat out, I, I, I want to have a coma and die, you know? Mm, kind of, sometimes. I mean, I... <laughs> sometimes. I'm Maybe really I'm tired, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you said it the best. It is kind Paul, of like coffee. a family reunion. Yeah. It's cool to get to see people that we know and people that we don't know and chat about camping and travels and life and Kids yeah, and, and then dogs. When, then when new people come, it's really fun because yeah. it's like, yay, a new person. Welcome to the family. This is going to yeah. be so much fun. I'll see you yeah. next year and every other year forever. Yes, <laughs> it is. Very fun. We love it. You Good should come. Stuff. Yep. Before we go, one more giant thank you to Lance Campers for sponsoring our podcast, sponsoring this rally, and also making a badass truck camper. Can we thank them for that? I think we can thank them for that. (laughs) Lance, we appreciate you and all the support. We actually ended up with more interviews than we know what to do with. In fact, too many interviews to fit into one episode. So, PJ, what do you say we wrap it up on this episode of the RV Small Talk podcast and do a little to-be-continued episode I think that sounds great. So y'all watch for the next one. It'll be coming out soon. And uh, more stories from our truck camper folks. These guys are hilarious. Yes. So stay tuned. Look for the next episode coming at you soon. Thank you again from the RV Small Talk team.